Hey guys. I'm Sarah. I'm Caitlin. And we are your best friends. Yay. <laughs> did you see my hands? <laughs> you did it. And we are your best friends. That was fabulous. <laughs> We are going to be talking about how to get over an awkward hump in friendship. An awkward hump could look like you're starting to become friends with the person and then all of a sudden you start to notice something that they do that kind of is annoying. Or, or you've been friends for a while and right now you guys are in this little season of tension or something. You've noticed there's awkwardness or there's something on your mind. There's just something in the friendship right now. And you're watching this video for advice. Like, should I cut my friend off? Does this mean we shouldn't be friends anymore? What do I do? Should I just move forward? Am I being the extra one? Or maybe it was literally just like a little moment, no matter what stage in friendship you're at, where they said something that kind of hurt your feelings. And you're like, this is awkward. They kind of hurt my feelings. What am I supposed to do now? That's why we just want to talk about this in a wholesome friendship way, like how you should go about this. So whatever awkward friendship moment you're going through right now, we're going to help you through it, okay? Yes. Should you cut them off? Should you stay friends? What are you going to do? We're going to help you. Yep. With that, please subscribe to our channel. Become a part of our friend group. We love having you guys on here. Let's jump right in. Step number one, we need to determine what you're upset about and if this is worth ending a friendship over, or if it's just something that needs to be talked about in the friendship, even if there is no clear solution, at least that friend knows how you feel. Because surprise, surprise, if you have friends, they're gonna let you down. Because people are imperfect, so there's gonna be moments, if you're friends with someone for five years, that yes, they're gonna hurt your feelings. They might let you down. It might not always be on purpose, it might sometimes feel like it was on purpose, but we have to be prepared for those things. And we live in a culture that's very quick to say, cut people off, they're toxic. And that's true sometimes, but sometimes it just needs to be talked about. You need to know that if you're experiencing an awkward moment or a moment where you're at this place like, I don't know what's going on and I don't know what to do, congratulations, you've made it far enough to a healthy friendship. Yeah. We're not talking about toxic people in this video, right? We're talking about this is a good friend, but like right now you have reached maybe your first time where something's off and you feel the tension. This is a good thing. Every friendship has this. And on top of living in a society now that cancels people quickly, we also live in a generation where we have been fed perfected images of relationships and friendships. So on top of the regular struggle with having an awkward thing, now we also assume maybe this isn't even normal. Maybe our friendship's messed up because you see all these people, you might assume Caitlin and I just get along perfectly. Yeah. And so something clearly is off in your head. Why are you overthinking it or in the friendship? And that's not true. With that, we'll just break it down. Should you end the friendship or not? You should probably, we're not talking about toxic people in this video, but if the friendship is really toxic, if that person is really mean, they're really out to get you, or maybe they're just a bad influence, they pressure you to do things you don't wanna do, that's a different situation mm -hmm. where we don't need to resolve that. We can move on yeah. from that. But if this person is just a human being and they did something that hurt your feelings and they might have done it 10 times, if they're your friend, it's worth talking about, it's worth going through these steps and it's worth fighting for. Now that you know that it's not time to end the friendship, we got step number two, be encouraged and know that there's actually a purpose to working through what you're gonna work through with a friend. It's not just that you're gonna express how you feel or talk about how you feel simply for the sake of doing it. It's actually going to lead you to have a better friendship in the long term. What you'll find is that most people don't have deep friendships and it's because this is the awkward speed bump that you have to go through multiple times if you want to get there. A lot of us give up the second it gets hard. Yeah. And it stinks. Even I, even I feel it. Like, you're you're sailing. Like, you guys have had a good friendship, but it's easy when it's easy, but then all of a sudden, something happens and your brain can't let it go. And you're like, how am I going to deal with this? Should I just forget it? But you know, you can't forget it. You know something's got to be said. So a great example, and you know how you just said, 
This is gonna help you for your friendships mm -hmm. in the long term. This is gonna help you for all of your relationships on top of that. Mm -hmm. When you have a partner, you need to learn. This is not just for the friendship that you need to practice what we're about to tell you and what we're telling you. This is for life. Every single relationship. This pastor, I forget his name, but he gave a great example, a great metaphor for how this looks. Relationships and getting to the next level looks like stairs. People think it looks like this, but it looks like stairs. Stairs look like this, then it hits a wall, then you go up, it hits a wall, right? And imagine now, in every relationship, especially your friendships, you guys are doing fine and you've hit a wall. Somebody said something that hurt somebody's feeling, they have a bad habit that really ticks you off, they're weird in social settings, but you guys are fine behind. When it's just you two, you've hit a wall. Now you don't know what to do. Most people just give up or ignore it or brush it under the rug. But healthy people say, we've just hit a wall. We've got to work, 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 work. And look, you're at a new new threshold. You're at a new level. You're closer than before because you had the awkward conversation. You're closer than before because you went through something difficult together. You gain trust. And that's how relationships work. Every time Caitlin and I have had conflict, misunderstanding, hurt feelings, that wall, for me at least, you too, is like awkward at first. It's hard at first. But then when you get through it together, dude, it's like, wait, I feel more connected to you as a friend than I even did before. I didn't know we could get closer than this. And you will hear that repetitively in healthy relationships. That's how it works. Don't be afraid by this awkward friendship hump. So what we're gonna try to get you to do in this video to get over that wall is you're gonna learn how to talk to your friend about how you're feeling. That goes without saying, but I think it's important to clarify. Yes. We're gonna share with you guys at the end some really healthy tips for how to do that. A lot of us, a lot of us, did not grow up in homes where we were modeled the healthiest communication. So the idea of telling a friend something about how your feelings were hurt could lead to a lot of excuses coming up in your mind as to why you should just not talk about it for sure and sweep it under the rug even if that friend wasn't trying to hurt your feelings your feelings are still valid you want to talk to them about it because close relationships are able to just talk about things even if you feel like this friend's gonna think i'm weird it's been too much time since this incident has passed or it, it was my fault anyway yeah they didn't do anything wrong so i'm just not going to talk about it those are just excuses to get you to not go over the awkward wall. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage you, as we tell you how you're going to solve this and how you're going to bring it up to your friend, don't let any excuse get in the way of that because yeah. trust me, they will come up because yes. that's what happens when we hit obstacles. For sure, recognize the excuses right now that you're thinking about in this friendship show because this is not an easy thing. Even for very mature people, it's not easy. When it's good, it's good, but like when it gets awkward, the excuses are gonna pop up. Some of the ones for me could be like, uh, too much time has passed now, like it's been three days since the incident. It's too late now to bring it up. She, They're gonna think I'm crazy or whatever. That's one of mine. And then another one sometimes, this isn't mine anymore, but used to be, well, they don't deserve for me to tell them this because like they should just know. They don't deserve it. And I've had many different excuses, but I just felt like it'd be worth yeah, sharing two, two that are, that get in the way of me sharing. And I think for me right now, the most often one is like, well, a few days have already passed, but it has to be said. It has to be said. And that kind of goes with our third tip. Just don't bottle this up. Don't go through it alone. If you're feeling like annoyed, frustrated, hurt by a friend, we all have ways in friend groups where we're feeling frustrated sometimes with your friends. Don't keep it to yourself. It's not worth it. It's not gonna help. It's only gonna help if you talk about it with that friend. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're keeping up a lot of things inside of you. You're building up a lot of hurts inside of you. And that person maybe would love to fix what they did wrong to you, but they'll never know if you don't tell them. So just wanna encourage you, that does go with the last one, but if you've never had a lot of practice communicating or if you grew up maybe with parents who didn't talk with you about feelings and how they've hurt you, you didn't have that open line of communication, you're going to want to go through it alone 
don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not what we want you to do no. in this awkward friendship hump. Yeah, because if you learn how to do life alone now, you're always going to do it no matter how many people are around you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in marriages who are actually doing life alone even though somebody goes to sleep next to them every night. Yeah. Because it's a thing in here. It's not an external look. And you said something in the point before. You said you should just be able to talk about it. And I want to let that sink in for a second. Sometimes that calms me down a lot. It's like, you know what? All I want to be able to do is just talk about it with you. And I'm saying you and me as like the most relevant example right now. It's a, in a lot of different relationships in our lives. But honestly, there's, there is nothing wrong with just talking about it. And we're going to go, the next point is going to be like how to talk about mm -hmm. it. But I want to just remind you like your friends and you should be able to just talk about it instead of like playing a defense case. Like, hey, I have to give you this reason why you screwed up and then they got to listen so that they can defend themselves. We don't do that. We want to have a conversation about it to understand each other's side in order to hear each other's minds because your brain is different than your friend's brain. So remember, you're in the right if your mindset is not, I'm going to communicate now and I'm going to get them to see my point of view. You're right if you say, you know what, I just want to have a conversation with them about what hurt me because I don't want to do this alone. I want them to hear my brain and I'm even going to preface all of what I'm going to go to them with by saying, hey, listen, I honestly have never been shown how to have like healthy line of communication. I'm more so used to having passive communication or I'm used to a family that brushes things under the rug, but I just watch this video and I'm learning how to have healthy communication so that I'm not alone anymore. So I want to express something. Don't freak out. And this just hurt my feelings. I just want to talk about it. It's not you. I want to be able to talk about it. I kind of give you an example, but that's literally how I would do it if I was freaked out about it all. Because good people should just be able to listen without getting offended. Now that we've kind of mentally prepared you, is how We've to, marinated them. We've, <laughs> we've marinated them for the big step. <laughs> the big step you're gonna take, how to talk about it. You have something that you went through with a friend. You have something, if you're watching this video, that's on your mind, you got a person yeah. in your mind, you got something that kind of ticked you off, and you're like, okay, now what do I do? Yeah. Are we just gonna put that? So, <laughs> that hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> Starts fighting on the camera. <laughs> By yelling. <laughs> I'm offended, Sarah! <laughs> Healthy communication. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> how to express to a friend. How to have that conversation that Sarah's talking about. I'm just going to throw out a few guidelines, please. Because this is just a conversation. I and Sarah are both not drama people. We don't want this to turn into a drama. No. This isn't supposed to be a fight with your friend. This isn't supposed to be a defense attorney case. This is literally just supposed to be a conversation where your guard's down, you're not trying to prove your point, just talk. A few points I want to throw out. You're not attacking your friend. Do your best to be gentle and understanding before you talk to your friend understand their point of view. If you find yourself like ticked off by what they did, check your heart first for before. Sure. before. Let's not be rash with our words. Can't believe you just did this to me. That was so messed up. Take a second, sit alone, and think, okay, maybe they didn't mean it in that way. Maybe you don't have to fully understand on your own, but we just don't want you to be rash, just spitting out whatever's coming to your mind. If you've never done this before, one, pray and really ask God to help you. That's the, the best. Way. We can't do it on our own. You just can't. And then either write out or think to yourself about how you're actually feeling about yeah, the situation. Yeah, like in your journal. Right. Because if you're feeling triggered, which is what happens a lot of the times when a little thing causes us to be hurt, there might be a lot of thoughts that make a lot of sense, but then there also might be a lot of thoughts that aren't making a lot of sense. Things that are you're now thinking about your friend that aren't true. And, and then they're blown out of proportion. Yes. I would just write out in your journal or think about it, what is the actual incident that's causing you to feel this way? Identify what it is, how it made you feel. Yeah. Then start writing out, how do you actually feel right now? I feel like my friend 
abandoned me. I feel like my friend didn't respect me. Good things to know. Yes, I feel like my friend wasn't listening to me. Wasn't loyal. Yes. Nail it down to what you are feeling like. And then you want to figure out, what do I want this person to do for me? What's going to make me feel better? Yeah. Because sometimes it's not always just a clean cut solution. There doesn't always need to be reparations that are made for every problem. Sometimes you just think to yourself, you know what, it would just make me feel better if my friend knew that that hurt me and said they were sorry. Yeah. And then that way, when you communicate to your friend, you're not all over the place. Like, you did this, you did this, you did this, and your friend's sitting there like, what do you want me to do about that? Yeah. Another thing that I have found sometimes journaling and writing down, let's say I've had a hard day, and then on top of it, it's this friend stuff that we're talking about, and I write it down. All of a sudden, I begin to remember as I'm writing down, I love my friends. I love them. And my friends aren't perfect. And my friends got a life of their own to get through too. My friends don't know what their future could hold. They might be going through tough times right now. You know, most likely my friends are just doing the best version they know how to do. And I believe that after praying, that part really starts to take root. And then you get, God God really marinates you like a chicken. <laughs> he softens you up through this little process we're bringing mm-hmm. you through. So then when it's the time to talk to them, are you nervous? Yes, I get super nervous. My heart will race sometimes. But he gets you to the point where you're like, you know what though? I actually, in my heart, I feel love even before I'm about to express this. I feel love for them. Because remember, we're a lot of us are just doing our best. And it's so good that you said, figure out what you even want. Because what we definitely don't want, remember, we're trying to train you to be a good friend, a secure person. And you can't vomit your problems onto somebody and not even know what you want from them. That shows that you have a lot of pain going on and you haven't even taken the time to evaluate Mm -hmm. why is it even there. Nobody can actually ever make you offended. That's a choice that you make to be offended. So our job is to understand what is going on inside of me that gets offended by this. Because odds are it's things from our childhood or things from our day or our life or our stresses that is really hurting us. But then our friend was like that poor cherry on the top that like triggered everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna throw a really real example. Let's say you go to this hangout with your friends and you've been feeling super lonely. You've been wanting a boyfriend. And now something happens in the friend hangout and your friend didn't like, she wasn't with you the whole time. You might think my friend's not loyal to me, but really there's just a chance like you've just been feeling lonely Mm -hmm. and alone and her not being there on top of it kind of triggered you. Super specific, but I just wanna show you, it might not actually be fully your friend. But like what Caitlin said, sometimes it's not that your friend needs to fix something. Make sure that they're just not like, what do you want me to do? I don't, what did I do wrong? It's more so you just want them to know your heart. I actually took the time to evaluate. I journaled that. I've been realizing that I've been feeling very lonely and kind of insecure. I've been wanting a boyfriend, I've been wanting this. And I wanted to let you know that it's not that you have to fix anything. I just want to let you know that because I love you. It's super specific, but that's how it goes down, at least in in our friendship and in my life. Just because they didn't intend to hurt you doesn't mean it's not worth talking about. A lot of things maybe technically aren't your friend's fault. Maybe they just said something and Like you said, it's a choice to be offended. You chose to be offended, but hey, you're hurt now. And so because of that, you might feel like invalid expressing because you will think, well, there's no way they could have known, like blah, blah, blah. It's not about like who's right or wrong. It's just about talking about it. And if you're getting those lies, you can just make it clear to your friend. Hey, I don't even, I'm not even sure that you could have done anything better. It's just, it made me feel this way and I just want to talk about it because I was feeling so down and I just want my friend to be there for me. And the last thing I'll say is sometimes you're going to have to help your friends learn how to talk about this. Definitely. You're probably going to be the only one, especially if you're younger in your friend group, who's even going to try to have these deeper friendships and try to resolve these conflicts in a healthy way versus being dramatic. P.S. Definitely don't gossip to anyone not do that Girl. keep it between you and your friend you're gonna be probably one of the only ones you can tell your friend before I'm gonna express something to you this is kind of how 
I could see this going down or this is what would make me feel better. And you can give it as much clarification and guidelines as to how you want to communicate while not controlling the other person, but kind of teaching them how to do this so that also if that friend didn't grow up communicating, they're not totally confused either because you can't blame them yeah. for not knowing. And if they totally take it the wrong way and you know you did it all well, don't, this is pretty important too, don't continue to word vomit now and convince them. Get, like, let them, because it's true, I have had a few experiences where I did it all right, but they legit just are not used to confrontation, even if it's the kindest confrontation, and they still take it the wrong way, and they still are like, not used to this. Don't, you don't have to word babble and just get them to reel them back in. Just give them time and pray. You've done your best. If you know you love them, you know you did it in the right way, you did your best, let them go for a little bit. They will calm down. It's super new for some people to have healthy confrontation. But I will say this is super important. There's two kinds of people, peacekeepers and then connected people. Peacekeepers keep the peace and sometimes it's by sweeping things under the rug. Sweeping things under the rug doesn't mean the dirt has disappeared, it's just hidden. And it does come up at some point. It builds up. Do you know anybody in your life who explodes after months or something? Because they've been holding it in. Yeah, that's called keeping the peace. The other people are the connected people. And those people, they make a mess at first and then it gets cleaned up and they're connected. What I mean by mess is you might feel like as soon as you spoke to them, like it might turn into a longer conversation or it might feel like, what have I done? Why did I just do this? That's good. It gets a little messy at first and you will see how the dust settles and how God cleans it up and how the conversation ends up taking you. But the mess has got to happen in order for there to be connection afterwards. Remember this little stair thing, this is all a mess right here. This is figuring it out, figuring it out, but you reach a new level and you're more connected. I choose to be connected, which means going through the hard, 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 messy times, but at least I'm connected with my friend versus living like a 80% connected life where you're kind of hiding some things for them. I don't want to be a peacekeeper. I want to be a connected person. And I want to encourage you in that. If you feel like right after you shared, you're like, why did I just do this? I messed everything up. Odds are you just did it right. Odds are you just did it right. Let God, after you've prayed, remember you prayed, let him settle everything else. But you did super good. And then just Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Lastly, the best thing you got to know is you put on your cloak of gentleness after you've prayed and you're good. Don't let anger enter your words. Be gentle, be kind, and you're good. You can't, <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Inhaled my green tea. You can't control how they will respond to you, but you can control how you respond to them. And so long as on your side over here is gentle and calm and knows that you already prayed, you're good. Trust us, you are good. God will sort out the rest. Let him be your judge. Let him be your keeper. You just be gentle and do it all in love. And you're doing so good. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys so much. We hope that you have learned how to get through the awkward friendship hub because we know oh. that anyone who's watched this point, you're definitely having a specific situation in mind. So thank yeah. you guys so much for watching. Comment down below. <clears throat> get it together comment down below how you're gonna apply what we just gave you what you're going through yeah and stay just strong man stay strong and thank you guys so much for tuning in with us yes we love you guys so much and we will see you in the next video bye, bye.